Hello, people. Welcome to our October Coder Academy information session. We are very happy that you're joining us this evening uh, and sharing your evening with us. So, yeah, thanks for being here. It's really cool that you're here. Um, if you're here, what you'd want to be hearing about is our web development boot camps. So that's what we're here to tell you about this evening, all the ins and outs of those. And for you guys to ask any questions that you have about anything to do with our boot camps in the live chat. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just wait for a few more people to arrive. But basically, yeah, we're going to share the next 45 minutes to an hour together. Uh, my name is Lee and I'm joining you from Sydney. Um, I'm one of the enrolment advisors for Coder Academy, which means I help people to understand if this is the right course for them and if they're well set up to actually take this course on. Um, yeah, Dallas, my colleague, he'll be joining us shortly. He's uh, in Brisbane and we'll be taking you through, yeah, what, what the course has to offer you. So um, I might get started. Shall I do that? Yeah, woo. And Dallas says woo. Okay. <laughs> He's on the live chat already. He'll be coming off there in a little bit. Okay. So but first we'll begin with an acknowledgement of country. Um, we welcome you. In the spirit of reconciliation, Coda Academy acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. Excuse me. <laughs> um, who are we? So this is us. This is me, Lee. Uh, and here is Dallas. He's our other enrolment advisor for Coder Academy. And I'll invite him to just pop on screen with us for a second. Hi, Dallas. Hello. <laughs> how's, it, how's it going guys i uh, so once again my name's dallas i'm one of the enrollment advisors here at coder academy as well and i'm uh, in brisbane but uh look we're happy to have a chat no matter where you are in australia or even the world sometimes uh i'm just gonna let you guys know that um we're open to any questions you might have along the way you do not have to wait until the end please go ahead and throw them in uh the chat there's a couple of um little options for you to chat uh one of them is the q a uh we would like you to avoid the q a button if you could and just use um that chat option uh, in the chat, you might find that there's a little drop down menu next to two uh, with a few options. Um, basically, we want you to use the one that says everyone. Uh, that way, everyone can see your questions and uh, everyone can see the answers when we answer. So that's pretty much it. So definitely throw your questions in there along the way and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, any leftover or anyone just that seem a little bit tough for me to sort of answer just typing, uh, we will answer the question with a bit of a Q&A session. Cheers. Thanks, Dallas. I'll catch you later. Okay. Bye. So yes, <laughs> yeah. This is us. This is our. This is our. Uh, these are our roles at Coder Academy. We're here to help you to discover if this is the right course for you. So let's get started, guys. Okay. So let's start from the very beginning. If you're kind of interested, maybe you're looking for a career change. You think you like the sound of coding, but you're not really sure exactly what it is. We're going to go right back to the basics, just for our explanation here this evening. So code is the language used to tell computers what to do. It's a set of instructions that can be used to make websites, apps, and process data. So types of coders include software engineers, programmers, web developers, front, backend, and full stack developers. Uh, taking one of our boot camps will, you know, will have you leaving the course after, if you take the optional industry placement after 11 months, and moving into industry within, you know, one to three months after that um, into a role usually in front end, back end or full stack junior roles. Yeah. Front end versus back end. What are these words? Um, on the left, you have an example of what front end development kind of deals with, which is the aesthetics and the clothing and the look, uh, the beautification of websites. And the back end deals with more server side, uh, yeah, all of the nitty gritty, all the languages, the gestures, and yeah, the systems behind everything. Uh, you may find once you start the course that you have a real preference for one of these over the other. Some people think that they're going to really enjoy front end with all of the beautification and 
um, yeah, the aesthetics of a website, but then they end up obsessed with the back end. So do come in with a blank, kind of as a blank canvas with no preconceived notions. You never know where you will end up. The languages that we teach in the course are HTML, CSS. We actually teach Python programming with uh, Flask as the framework as well, and then JavaScript. Um, thinking about these things and making a bit of an analogy uh, about the coding languages as if they were a human body, the HTML would be like the skeleton of the body, um, the structure, the things that hold it together. The CSS would provide the glasses, you know, the fashion, the rings and, and such. And the JavaScript would be, you know, be there to gesticulate, to make everything move and action together. So that's how it kind of fits together. And that's why it's important to understand deeply um, more than one language so that you have a really comprehensive cover and you're able to actually use these things to make interactive websites and web-based applications. The tools and technology that you will need um, throughout the course, you need a web browser such as Safari, Firefox, Chrome. Um, you need a coding editor and a source code hosting platform such as GitHub. Who employs full stack web developers? Well, actually you could probably almost say everyone. <laughs> There's a lot of different, uh, a lot of roles out there in very, very different fields. You could end up working as a full stack uh, developer for, you know, a bank, an agricultural company, like a healthcare service, you name it, you could end up working there. Everyone has a need for these roles. Um, generally speaking, though, you could end up at an IT company. Uh, Retail is a really big area, you know, especially post pandemic, everybody was moving moving uh yeah their marketplaces much more into the online realm you know understanding that oh actually our website's not really great we probably need to work on that because a lot more people are online shopping these days still is a really popular way to shop so there's a lot of work in that area um making websites for retail you could be working for a financial financial institution and we do find that you know quite a lot of our students might go on to actually do this um working for a bank and yeah like working on like a, in and around the atm side of things as well help or helping people to easier access superannuation via their online platforms things like this uh or you could be working for a digital agency which deals with basically coming up with um digital solutions for all kinds all kinds of clients so you could work for a digital agency that, you know, gets you a job making an online website for, uh, for a charity that's looking to, looking to, um, yeah, to, to petition for, for certain, for certain environmental uh, projects and such. So there's so much, there's so much room, so much space, um, so many places that you could end up from having done something like this. So when you finish, you're going to be earning uh, out of the course, the average for the junior full stack web developer is between 63 and 75K. Um, that's for a junior. Uh, you can move upwards quite quickly. We understand this from our graduates who we've spoken to. Um, yeah, there's a lot of room for quite fast progression and upward mobility as far as your salary is concerned. So in a few years' time, the average is 120K. There's plenty of money to be made there. That's the average. You could be earning more than that as well. Um, job growth, there's 30% job growth within the next five years, and they are in-demand skills. We do need more full-stack uh, web developers. It's one of the most in-demand IT skills to this day. Our boot camp is essentially ideal for pretty much everybody. We do see that career changes make up a large portion of our cohorts. That's not to say that we don't get people looking just to upskill or people who are, who are taking the course as an alternative to university, like wanting to move out of high school and study something and move straight into industry. That happens as well. But 
generally speaking, we do see a lot of career changes taking uh, taking the course. The course assumes that you're a beginner. So if, you know, if you've never coded before and you're like, I'm really sick of working in health or I don't want to work in hospitality anymore, um, then this could be the perfect, perfect course for you. You know, you can change, you could study the course and change industries within a year to a year and a half. So it's really still very fast um, as far as a career change is concerned. So our next web development bootcamp starts in almost exactly two weeks. Um, it will run for 10 months. We have a four-week optional industry placement at the end of the course, which we can speak more about when Dallas comes back for the Q&A at the end, no worries. It is a 100% virtual classroom and we're very comfortable in this space. Um, our timetable for the October session is Monday and Wednesday evenings, 7 to 9 p.m. and Saturday morning, 9 to 1.30. So that constitutes eight hours of online virtual classroom time per week. Outside of that, though, you definitely need 13 to 20 hours to put towards getting through all of your coursework. Um, yeah, that's the facilitated self-study time. During that time, though, you do have access to help Monday to Saturday, 9 to 5, from our educators in CODA student hubs in Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. Um, you will finish with a higher education diploma of web development, which is similar to diploma of IT, however, with more focus towards more aspects of web development. So in our this updated, upgraded diploma that we offer, we've got much more focus on DevOps, so back-end development in the second term uh, and containerization and learning how to use Docker. So this is something that we've understood from industry that we needed to put into the course to be, to stay updated and relevant and that there was a gap in the industry. Um, yeah, a gap in knowledge from juniors, which means jobs are there for people with those skills as well. Uh, the price for the course is $22,250 and fee help loans are available for Australian citizens. Here's how it looks for you uh, in a timetable. So essentially your live classes would be happening uh, on Monday and Wednesday evenings from 7 till 9 p.m. Your other live class section, the largest chunk of time is on the Saturday morning from 9 to 1.30. So the four hour session is there. And then all through the week, you've got access to support. And it's, you know, if you have a question about something, if you're stuck, if you're confused, if your code's not working, you have a very quick turnaround on any questions that you have. Um, you've got access to Discord which is where you can find communications from your educator and your peers, both as useful as each other, to be honest. Um, so that's where you're going to be getting all of your help from. But if you feel like you need a face-to-face -face chat, you just need to be in a room with somebody speaking to them and sort of, yeah, maybe it's a really tricky concept for you or you just need a chat. You can, you know, book some time out with your educator, with an educator in Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane student hub and they will sit with you and go through um, what might be, you know, a barrier for you at that time. Yeah. So when you break the boot camp down, it looks like this. So it's two terms. Um, the terms are long, but they have a break in the middle of each one. So in term one, you'll start to learn HTML and CSS you'll build a portfolio website, you'll start a bit of Python programming, you'll be building a terminal application and you'll move into using Python with Flask as a framework. Um, in term two, that's where you'll start JavaScripts, you'll learn about deployment, you'll do React, you'll build a full stack web application for a client and you'll move into DevOps, fundamentals, AWS usage, and you'll learn how to use Docker. Then following on from that, you have an optional industry placement where you have the opportunity to be placed with one of our industry partners for a period of four weeks. Um, there are, you know, there's a lot of things to talk at, about this point. So we can speak about it 
later when we get to the Q and A. No worries. There's a lot. There's a lot to it, and it's a really exciting opportunity. And then, having finished your uh, your industry placement, you're really very you're really job ready. So you've had some experience. You've got this beautiful digital portfolio. You've had all of this mock interview practice. Your LinkedIn profile looks fantastic. Your resume reads really well. All of it's ready to go for you to walk off into industry. Yeah. So that's what we provide at Coder Academy. Our graduates continue to work at these places. Some of them might be really familiar to you. Um, others not as familiar. That's because of the size of them. Some of them are much smaller than others. Some are huge and recognisable. Um, but this is just a, you know, a tiny, tiny sample of where our, our students are working and of our industry partners. We do have, this represents around 2% of, you know, the partners that we do have. So just gives you an idea of the kinds of, well, the very different actually, spec like the diversity of the companies that take on um, our grads, yeah. So here's what some of our past students have had to say. Now, this is just like amazing to me. So this is Agin and she was a cheerleader. That was her career. She was a, she had a career in cheerleading and decided that she would really like to move into being a web developer. And yeah, now she's working full time as a developer and believes that, you know, the foundation that she received at Coder Academy is the main reason why she's able to succeed so well in her role. But what what a transition, you know, cheerleading to web development, amazing. So no matter what background you've got professionally, you can totally do this, guys, you know? Okay, this is Christopher Baker. He was in sales, retail sales. So, I mean, I think a lot of people have worked in retail before. You get to a certain point where perhaps you've reached the sort of ceiling of what you can learn and what you can earn as well, you know. There's kind of nothing left there for you. So you get a bit stuck. You're kind of grinding your wheels in the sand. So he's um, he's come from that retail aspect, but bringing all of these amazing transferable skills with him into being a developer. So all that customer-centric approach that he learned um, back in his retail days, that really helped him because he used those soft skills, you know, while he was in the course and now he's a software developer at Entain and they are huge. Apparently an amazing place to work for with a great culture, so good on him. Uh, Reese Morton, Reese Morton is just, he's the loveliest. He's so, he's such a lovely guy. Um, he's joined us on a webinar previously. He came from the hospitality industry to become a full stack web developer. Uh, he joined Coder Academy not too long back, actually. I think it was just two years ago. Um, but he had 12 years in hospitality. It's a long time. And then to decide that you want to do something really different, it's pretty brave. Um, he, he did his industry placement with a company called Cogness and then they hired him from the placement. So that does happen too. You may be one person that that happens for as well. So yeah, that is, that is something that can happen for you. Um, we do offer scholarships for the course. If you are thinking of joining us for October, this opportunity no longer exists, unfortunately. But if you are thinking further afield, like February, uh, well, the applications for the scholarship would close two weeks before the course starts. Course will be starting on Feb 10th. Yeah, applications will close on the 27th of January. To be successful in getting this scholarship, you need to stake your case as to what makes you diverse. That can be many, many things. So it could be gender. It could be that your background is extraordinary and you have a bunch of languages under your belt. It could be that you faced some terrible, um, really 
tricky periods of adversity in your life, like go forth and conquer. Talk about what makes you different. Why are you a great person to represent diversity in the tech industry? Yeah. So if you are successful, you get 50% off the tuition fee. It's significant. It's definitely worth applying for. <laughs> okay. Our application process is really quite simple. Uh, you apply on our online form. Uh, it's just a one-page form. Put in your application. Dallas will probably put a link in the chat to do so. So you apply. Um, then you enroll. So applying and enrolling aren't the same thing. Applying is going, hi, I'd like to join the boot camp. And then after that, we send you a letter of offer. You sign it. And then from there, um, from there you will, yeah, talk about payment options. Um, if you're applying for fee help, we apply on your behalf. You don't need to do anything through a third party for that. Um, and then finally you will be enrolled. Now, if you have all of your things ready to go, if you've got your qualifications and, you know, all your documents sorted out, this process can take a really, really short time. It can be, you know, you could be enrolled in a day easily. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we're two weeks out from our October start date. You can apply any time between now and our start date. Of course, it's better if you apply sooner rather than later. That just means we'll be able to send you all of the logins and the, the details for your learning platform. And also the pre-work for the course, which is not extensive, but it gives you a little bit of a taster of what you can expect in the first, you know, couple of weeks of the course. Okay, our next information session is going to happen uh, on November 7th. It will be a lunchtime one. Please join us if you're interested in knowing what more we've got coming up at CODA in 2025. It's going to be quite a big year for us. We have a few more announcements to make around what we actually have to offer. We can't really talk much about it at this point, but we're excited to share it with you soon. Okay. Um, yeah, this is us. These are our avatars. <laughs> Amazing. If you would like to have a chat with us about your options and, you know, um, your particular circumstances around coming to coding, we love having a chat with you guys. That is absolutely the best part of our day for sure. So please give us a call. Um, yeah, we are waiting to hear from you. We can't wait. <laughs> if you just kind of, if you've got some barriers to joining, if you're not sure if your computer's the right one, if you just, you know, you've got a few, a few questions around timing of things, then just give us a call. We'll chat with you about it. If we don't think that it is the right fit for you, we will 100% tell you. We do, do say that sometimes. We say, mm, maybe not this time for you. You just don't have enough hours in your week to do this. Don't recommend. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll be very honest. <laughs> okay. Uh, now this brings us to our question time. So, Dallas. Come back. Hello. Come I've been paying no attention to what's happening on the live chat. How's it been? <laughs> oh, I had so many more cool links to things to throw in there. Um, but the questions sort of kept coming. And so uh, I just didn't really put anything in there. I just kept answering questions. They were good questions. It was, uh, it was, it was quite the time you missed out on some action. No, um, we'll go through those. Um, <laughs> there weren't any that I didn't answer. Uh, in the chat while we're going, but we can reflect on a few because I feel like there were some pretty good questions and there were some bangers. Um, but look, uh, one thing that I will touch on, um, Tyson actually was asking about live class attendance, which is super important. Okay. So, um, you know, you're going to have, uh, basically there's eight hours of live classes, as Lee said, uh, per week. Okay. Um, four of those hours are going to be, you know, evenings, uh, midweek, uh, and then you're going to have four hours on a Saturday, okay? Um, a lot of people do ask if they can uh, get away with um, not attending that Saturday live class. Um, long story cut short, because we're accredited, uh, you do need to have an 80% attendance record in order to pass the course, okay? So you do need to attend that Saturday live class. Also, if you think about it from the perspective of the Saturday is 50% of the live classes for the entire boot camp, 
you really can't miss a ton of them. Um, but yeah, like I said in the chat there, life does get in the way sometimes. Uh, these live classes are recorded for reflection later on. And also you can obviously watch them if you happen to be so sick or something happened that you couldn't attend it. But ultimately, you do really need to be at those live classes. Um, do you have anything else to, to say about that, Lee, at all? No, you covered it beautifully. Well done. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Very good. Anything Stop else it. we got? Stop. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, we got one from uh, Matthias. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm mm -hmm. butchering your name. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that though. I think Matthias. Um, so he asks if the course is 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 more suitable for an employee or someone who is literally going to I guess start their own business or or develop their own app or something. And um, yeah, what I'd say is basically uh, like I mentioned in the chat a little bit later and was mentioned on here as well by Lee. Um, upon completion of the bootcamp, you're going to be considered a junior full stack web developer. Okay. So you're going to be proficient in front end and back end development. You're going to be able to build complex websites, databases, web based applications, all of these cool things. Okay. Um, which basically means that, you know, you can do both of those things. You can use it to break into the industry and become a developer and work for a company. That's, yep. But you'll also be capable of building apps yourself. Uh, and, you know, if you want to go to market with something, you absolutely can. Um, obviously, you know, this is not a, uh, this is not a, a business course. Okay. Uh, we teach the development side of things. So, you know, you're going to need to uh, probably speak to some people or have a bit of savvy uh, on that, that part for you, for yourself, if you're going to go live uh, to market with an app that you've built. Um, but yeah, you can do either of those things essentially. Yeah. Um, what else have what we got? Else? Um, the ties also asked actually about, uh, industry placement and, mm. uh, you know, where our partnering companies are. Um, I, I pretty much said, yes, Brisbane city and Melbourne, uh, sort of like mm -hmm. where a lot of most of our partnering companies that we deal with are, but we also have partnering companies all over Australia, um, because we speak to a lot of people and there's a lot of development, um, sort of like roles that are remote out there. A lot of partnering mm -hmm. companies that are happen, are happy enough to take on, um, yeah, industry, industry placement or, or you know, um, interns, uh, remotely. So, yeah. uh, that's definitely available too. Uh, what else? I mean, if you think about it, uh, the tech industry, they're the ones that created remote work. They're the ones that invented it. So there's definitely going to be more opportunities for remote work available in this industry than others. I was actually just speaking to Steve from Partnerships this week and um, asking him about remote remote placement. So this comes at a good time, um, Matthias. So I, I think, um, yeah, like no matter where you are in Australia, um, they're going to try their best to work towards getting your placement as close to you as possible. Um, and they'll give it a red hot go to find something that's near you to partner with someone who's near you to make that opportunity happen for you. If it can't, as Dallas said, they they might find you something that's a remote placement. Yeah. Like you could do it completely remotely. We've had students many in the past where they've taken, they've done their 100% remote code of course. They've moved into a 100% remote, <laughs> remote placement. And then they've begun work in a remote team <laughs> in their first job in tech, like it's just 100% <laughs> remote world. So it could be you that this happens for as well. Um, yeah, that, there are lots of possibilities out there. Yeah. So don't be sure. kind of, um, don't be, what what to say, like don't be kind of turned off, you know, starting a boot camp because you live in a regional or rural area. It still doesn't, it doesn't mean that that opportunity doesn't exist for you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything else? Uh, yeah, so I've got a there's a few there's a few new messages popping up. I'll read I'll get to them in just a moment. Um, but yeah. I was going to say uh, the last one I'll read back is um is Sam's. So Sam mm -hmm. is uh, asking if it's an internationally recognised qualification. Now that's a funny question, okay, Sam, because um you know uh, as far as like qualifications go, there doesn't tend to be a lot of internationally recognised things out there. But what I can say is. We are nationally recognized, okay? So it's an accredited course through, like, you know, the Australian government has actually um, sort of acknowledged that it's an accredited course. Uh, it's a higher education diploma of web development. Uh, and also coding uh, is a universal language, okay? So uh, coding is actually um, the same all over the world, no matter what country you're in. Um, it's always going to be the same languages. Uh, coding 
uh, development languages are actually built off of the English language. So provided you have a grasp of English, um, you know, you can definitely, um, you know, code anywhere in the world uh, when it comes down to it. What I will say as far as international, I guess, recognition goes, um, Australia being the country that it is with the education that it has, um, we do tend to get recognized in a lot of other countries in the world because Australia has really good education. Um, so if you were to go overseas uh, with and then and, and show, you know, the, the certification or the qualification you receive from Coder Academy, um, there's a good chance that someone will, um, yeah, I guess, take it at face value. Uh, because yeah, we, we just we just have really good education, so they they would assume that that we would not have steered you wrong. <laughs> so that's pretty much um, what I'll say. Anything to add to that, Lidl? No, again, I think you've covered it honestly. Um, cool. Just having a look through the questions now that I've actually have got a moment <clears throat> as well. Yeah, it's been a very lively chat. It's awesome. Okay, where are we up to? <laughs> where are uh, we up so, to? <laughs> so the last one. Um, so this is from the new messages now. So Tyson's got one okay. here saying, uh, is there a break between terms? Uh, might have missed this. I don't know if we did cover it, but uh, there is a break in between terms. Essentially, um, the, the the boot camp is broken down into into two two semesters, two terms, two semesters. Uh, and, then, and then those are actually broken down into two segments as well. We'll say, we'll say that to a degree. So there actually yeah, happens like to be term one yeah. A and one B, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Kind, kind of like that. So, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. so there is a break in between the two semesters, uh, but then each semester would have two terms. So there is a small break in the middle of each of those semesters as well. So three breaks essentially um, that you'll come across. Uh, yeah. So there are breaks. It's, it's not just 10 months of like, you know, coding. <laughs> And yeah, before um, you actually take on the course, yeah. we're able to give you an academic calendar, which will show you where all those breaks fall and also where the industry placement falls so that you can kind of plan your life around it or, or your holidays. Because we do know, like, you're going to want a holiday. Mm. <laughs> you will need one. <laughs> take I might break. actually even, I might even have one somewhere here uh, that I can throw into the chat uh, momentarily after I answer yeah. a few more questions. Yeah, no um, worries. Yeah. So Sarabha said, can you please address my question about the ages? Uh, now the thing is, Sarab, I just didn't understand your question because I thought I, I thought I did. Um, I thought I answered it pretty thoroughly, uh, but we'll go back again. Um, so you've said, Hey, uh, how old do you need to be for this? Uh, and I've said, we accept students 17 years and older. Okay. Though we have accepted students age 16 years uh, before under special circumstances. Okay. Um, essentially, um, that's got to do with situations where, um, students may not be going to school anymore. Uh, we might need to do, um, you know, admissions, uh, interviews and admissions tests to make sure that they are able to take on the course with us. Okay. That's the sort of special circumstances we're talking about. Um, uh, but ultimately we ask that students have completed year 12. So you have, um, your HSC, uh, and, um, and, and the thing is, um, if you haven't, you can also go through admissions interviews and admissions, um, tests if, if, if needed. Um, so that's available to anyone. So don't stress out if, you know, um, you know, you, you're, you're say like you're, you're 35 plus and you don't know where your high school certificate is. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, we can, we can get around those situations. Um, but ultimately, um, so Rob, what I was saying is, uh, and then, and then after that, I went on to say, um, you know, we don't recommend, um, high school students to take on our boot camp while completing high school. Uh, we actually, we, 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 we outright don't really like you to do that um, because um, high school is enough as it is. It's a lot on a student's plate to handle. Uh, and our boot camp, um, you know, with with having eight hours of live classes per week uh, and an expected uh, 13 to 20 hours of self-study on top of those live classes, um, that's, that's, that's too much. That's too much for someone uh, that age to handle. So um, yeah, we prefer that you complete high school and then come on board for a boot camp with us afterwards and then move directly into the industry and never look back. <laughs> so that's pretty much, um, that's what we're, we're hoping for. So hopefully uh, that sort of answered your question. Let me just scroll back down here. Uh, Sam has just said she's um, here on a long-term <laughs> temporary visa with her husband building a large scale renewable project here till okay. 2026. Figured it was a good time to learn a new skill. I reckon it is too. Good choice. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so good. 
Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? Use your time <laughs> wisely and get get a few more get a few more um yeah skills under the, under your belt there. That's so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So um that last question um man I haven't even heard about that scheme for a little while but that is yeah definitely available. So um uh basically advice around the BHP Future of Work program. Uh, essentially, um if you're in the right area and you're eligible for it, um I say go for it. Uh, basically you can get a portion of, um, the boot camp paid for you, um, by BHP. That's pretty much what it comes down to. There's not really any advice to be given. Uh, you go onto the website, uh, which I have linked somewhere. Um, I'll find that too. Uh, and then pretty much from there, uh, you scroll a little bit further down the page. I believe it asks for your postcode and then it asks for your suburb and depending on where you are in Australia uh, you may be eligible um, for BHP to actually cover um, part part of that so um, cool thanks Dallas oh, looks like they aren't they taking apps anymore oh it looks like it's over well then yeah that's the case unfortunately that's that's the case um, basically what happens is BHP works with the government to get these grants um, and if, um, it, it may have ended the thing is though, um, I'm not saying it will come back, but it, there's a chance it may come back because it has actually finished and then started again quite a few times over the past few years. Um, it just, it just basically that it's BHP waiting, uh, to hear back from the government to see whether they can get reapproved. Um, we may never see it again, or it may turn, turn back up again. So we'll just have to wait and see. I might just stop sharing my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I've just left it like that. Just questions. Anyone have questions? Yeah. Do we no have worries. any more questions? Because we've got loads of time left if anyone has any burning questions. Um, otherwise, Dallas and I could probably roll through a few that we hear quite often just to to go through some things that you may not have thought of, I guess. Yeah. Um, mm. One of the ones that we do get asked quite often and um, Dallas will definitely agree with me, is like we get asked, okay, um, what does it mean that your course is accredited? What does that mean? Do you want to answer that, Dallas, what it means for us that we're accredited and what yeah, it means so, for joining us? Yeah, that's that's it, yeah. Look, I mean, it it means more to them than it does to us. But uh, <laughs> um, basically, <laughs> um, yeah, being accredited, like I said earlier, it means that the government has recognized us. So we're accredited through a company called Texa. We're an approving body. Uh, and essentially it means that, yeah, like we, you know, we, we are a course um, that is recognized by the government, uh, being a higher education diploma of web development. Uh, it means that Australian citizens uh, and New Zealand special category visa holders and a handful of other smaller sort of more unique, uh, I guess, people, um, can actually gain access to things like fee help government loans to defer payment um, for the course. Uh, so if you haven't heard of a fee help government loan, it's similar to a HEX help loan. You may have heard of HEX before. That was the big one. Uh, and now sort of fee help is sort of snuck in. They're very similar. Uh, if you do want to know more, you can go to studyassist.com. There's plenty of information there on government loans for these sort of things. Um, so that's a really big one. Also, uh, what it means is as far as the, the subjects go or the course itself, because we're being held to a higher standard by places like Texar, it means that, you know, what we talk about and sort of like, you know, what we advise that we're going to be delivering content on is exactly that. Uh, because we are accredited, um, you know, we can get in so much more trouble if we're telling you that we're going to be, you know, delivering education on things that we don't. Whereas if you could go to, um, you know, other, you know, maybe other smaller companies or other boot camp providers that may be teaching courses that aren't accredited, um, when it comes down to it, they could tell you they're going to teach you one thing. And then when you get in there, it's just simply not that good. And they don't teach you those skills because they're not accredited. They're not being held to a higher standard and they can't get in trouble by an approving body, um, you know, to, to, to you know, if, for, for not delivering those sort of things. So that's sort of what that's, a, that's, a, that's about. And the subjects that we do deliver, okay, which are accredited subjects, it means that they're actually university level subjects. So these are subjects that you will be doing in things like, you know, a Bachelor of IT, for example. So what you could do is complete a boot camp with us, uh, and then you could move into the industry as a developer. And then what you, if you really wanted to, you can move on to uni um, and you could probably study something a little bit more niche if you wanted to break into a certain area of tech that, that took a bit more study and you can get credit for the subjects you've completed with us previously. So that's kind of, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. 
looks like we've got a few more questions. Matthias is cool. asking, does the course include advice and prep around coding interviews at all? Indeed well, it does. We, Indeed it yeah. does. Quite a lot. Yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, it, it does. So we have a couple of subjects that actually cover uh, this sort of stuff as well um, that help you with um, sort of, you know, there's a few skills that it sort of teaches you um, alongside the coding. So it used to be all bare bones development. That's what we taught in our boot camps. But we've actually since um, started delivering a bit of education on those sort of things as well to make sure that you are prepared. Also, our partnerships company, um, they also want to make sure that you are, you know, as prepared as you possibly can be uh, when it comes to industry placement time. So they are also open uh, for having chats and making sure that, you know, your resumes and CVs are all perfect, uh, making sure you got all your ducks in the row as far as um, that goes. And and also, yeah, open to, um, you know, talking about technical interviews uh, is pretty much what they're called um, in the game. Um, basically, uh, yeah, they, they talk about the sort of things that you're going to come across, whether there's going to be coding tests or whether it's going to be um, sort of just like, just getting hammered with questions um, that, that might be a bit technical. Uh, but yeah, all those sort of things are spoken about and, and discussed. Mick is asking, are the, are the grades pass fail like TAFE or are they more like uni grades one to seven? So like, uh, you know, pass, credit, distinction, high distinction and so forth. Um, do you want me to take that one? Yeah, yeah. Far away. Um, Mick, it's a really good question. Yeah. So if you take a TAFE course, they it's a pass fail, you know, you need to pass some units of competency um, or you fail them. And if you fail, you get to try for that again. So with the course, you're getting graded like uni as we are a higher education level of uh, education. So essentially you're receiving a grade of either a pass, a credit, a distinction or a higher distinction. Um, in order to uh, be eligible to take on the industry placement at the end of the course, you need to receive a credit grade for each of the subjects that you've taken up to that point. If you're not interested in that opportunity to pass the course, you need to just get passes. That's fine. But the credit, um, the credit grade of 63 to 74 points, that's what's going to get you into uh, the opportunity to do the industry placement. Yeah. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> All right. Yeah, cool. um, yeah. Did you have anything to add to that, Dallas? No. Yeah. I was just going to say, I guess it's kind of like, um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's probably closer to uni, but it's kind of a bit of a combination of both. I say it's like a little bit of a hybrid of the two put together purely because of, um, you know, the op opportunity to, to get into um, industry placement um, needing a credit, but yeah, but yeah, no, it was a good answer. Um, yeah. So Dane, uh, Dane is asking how much the course is. We definitely covered it, Dane, but um, but yeah, no, absolutely. It's just over twenty two thousand dollars. It's actually twenty two thousand two hundred and fifty, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. basically, it's payable in monthly installments uh, using a thing called Easy Debit. Um, so you can actually pay um for uh, it's so it's working down into 10, 10 installments over ten months. The first installment can be um, you know, will be paid before the boot camp starts, okay? Uh, and that's your ticket in. Um, without having paid that first installment, we can't get you access to classes and content. Uh, but then, yeah, after that first installment's paid um, and the boot camp starts, it's basically month on month for the remaining nine payments. Uh, and then other than that, uh, Australian citizens and special category visa holders um, are able to actually defer payment using a fee help government loan if they want to go down that path. Hopefully that nice. covers those things, yeah. You've definitely covered those things. That was great. Um, Matthias is asking if I was plan if I was to plan to enroll for February, what prerequisite learning would you recommend to set a student up for the best chance of success? Ooh, yeah. good question. That is a good question. And look, um, I actually will throw these links in here right now. Um, so those are that's two different links there. Um. Ultimately, our boot camps teach you everything from the ground up, okay? Uh, you don't need to have any prior coding experience. Essentially, um, you just need to have a passion to learn. And I would say enjoy problem solving, okay? Because when it comes down to it, that's really what coding is. Uh, really enjoy problem solving. 
Um, and that, that's pretty much it. But if you want to get a head start on things, um, you want to play around with some HTML and CSS, okay? And you want to play around with a bit of Python. So Python is going to be the first object-oriented language you'll be touching on. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's that's what I suggest. Now, look, you could go ahead and start playing, you know, with with JavaScript and React JS, and then messing around with like um, Mernstack with MongoDB, and and then like practicing some Bash scripting and messing around with Terminal. And you know, you you could absolutely overwhelm yourself with a billion things that we will be covering in the course and learn nothing. <laughs> um, or you could focus on a bit of HTML, a little bit of CSS, and a bit of Python. Uh, in the lead up for, t for sort of the first term, okay? Um, it's best not to overwhelm yourself with all the things that we will cover because we cover a lot. There is a ton that you learn in this boot camp, but that's pretty much where you where's a, a good place to start. Nice. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Tiffany. Um, Catch you later. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Tiffany, for joining us. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, does anyone have any final questions before we let you... Go and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday evening. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to add, Dallas, that you reckon we haven't covered? Can you think of anything? I think that's pretty much it. What I might do is just quickly grab, I think I've got a, a link here to this. So I'll just throw that... Um, that uh october academic calendar in oh nice yeah that's handy. so that's there if anyone wants that academic calendar that is the um it's the the dates there uh for you to check out um what else that's pretty much it really and then i'll also i'll throw this um this link back in if you're ready to go ahead if you're ready to rock and roll um go ahead and apply now uh i guess you know the boot camp the october intake is coming up uh real soon so yeah we definitely don't want you to miss out and um also, if there's any questions that you might have had that, you know, you kind of just felt like you couldn't ask them here, definitely reach out to us. Um, we're open for a chat. We'll answer any questions, even if they, if even if you think that they're silly, we're definitely keen to have a chat and um, and, and and talk shop. So there is yeah, our details. Like, it can be good to chat about your own personal circumstances around taking the course, you know. Everyone's got different things going on in their lives. So, yeah, that, like, just give us a call. No worries at all. For sure. Really good. Yeah. Um, I reckon that might be it, hey? Yeah. Cool. Shall we call it? All right. Yeah. All right. We're going to call it. <laughs> but It's been beautiful. Been, yeah, it has been beautiful. Um, <laughs> Guys, if you have any further questions, again, we really, you know, we can't stress enough don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, give us a give us a bell. We love having a chat with you. That's the best part of our days. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. We had a great time seeing you guys tonight. Everyone, enjoy your dinner uh, and whatever, you know, whatever you're going to be streaming this evening, okay? Dallas, thanks for joining <laughs> me on the live chat. And bye, everyone, and good night. Bye-bye.